Your dreams have to be bigger than you. If your dreams are not bigger than you, they're too small. Crystal Joy and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am an actress, writer, and founder of Blue Room Productions. I post vlogs, behind the scenes commentary on my projects, and my films. But before this video is over, make sure you hit the subscribe button below to stay up to date. So on today's video, I wanted to talk to you about how I started my production company. So to register a business here in the States is a fairly easy process. All you have to do is fill out some paperwork, send it off to the state, and then they'll send you a piece of paper stating, congratulations, you're a business owner. So in 2017, I had decided I wanted to start my own company. I was in pre-production for my second short film, and I realized that I was making this work and I knew that I was going to continue making work so I wanted my work, I wanted my projects to fall under the umbrella of a business. When you go out on these auditions, yes, you have to put your best foot forward and do the best that you can do while you're in the audition room. But there is no guarantee that you'll get the job. So in between gigs, you're unemployed and that can be a very uncomfortable feeling, especially if acting is your main source of income, unless you have a day job. So starting Blue Room was also due to the fact that I didn't want to wait on other people to hire me. It gave me a high level of just discomfort. Being the boss over myself and having my own business simply means I'm not waiting on anyone to tell me yes. I tell myself yes and then I make it happen. I thought to myself, I can write. Why am I waiting on other people to tell me yes? So after making Crumble and I saw what I could accomplish and do, I thought to myself, I can do this again and again and again. And there's no telling where I could go. Even if Crumble was not the best film, it didn't have to be. I'm not, I'm not going to limit myself to anyone's idea of what I should or shouldn't do, what kind of artist I should or should not be. I tell what's in my heart. I tell what I'm inspired by and I'm inspired by life. And so starting Blue Room was my way of saying yes to myself, saying yes to creating my own path, saying yes to creating my own lane. I tell you who I want to be. I tell you who I am. No one tells me who I am as an artist or as a person. And I don't allow other people to dictate the kind of stories I wanna tell. And so as I'm continuing this path, I'm seeing the type of things that I wanna do and create and I'm exploring different ways to create art, to deliver my stories. That makes me happy. People will give you glass ceilings, but that's up to you to actually adhere to them. You don't have to set limits on yourself just because somebody else did. So if you wanna start your own production company or anything that puts you at the level of being the boss of yourself, do it. And do it afraid. I did it afraid. I didn't know what the future entailed. You learn business and how to conduct business through trial and error. That's the only way you learn. It's by making mistakes. And 2020 was definitely the year I made a lot of mistakes. Actually, 2019 and 2020 were two of my biggest growth spurts because I learned so much. But it's because I made a lot of mistakes. You can't be afraid to fail. That's honestly how you learn your biggest lessons is by messing up, by making mistakes. And you can't be afraid to fall on your face. You can't, you know, be so cautious to make a move. The other side is you have to take risks. And I have taken a lot of risks with my business and with my career. That's just what business is. That's how you move forward is you just, you have to jump. You have to take that leap. You have to jump off the cliff. Scared or not, you have to do it. Otherwise, you'll stay in your comfort zone. You'll stay stagnant. You'll stay in a box. 
Starting Blue Room Productions was a scary endeavor because I didn't know what the future held. And I'm sure people looked at me and thought she won't get far. And to be honest, I don't care what they thought anyway. I had this idea of the kind of art that I wanted to make, but I didn't know if it was gonna be successful or not. And honestly, success is what you make it. Everyone will have their own definition of success. People will put their definitions on you. That's on them. Your dreams have to be bigger than you. Because if they're not, if your dreams don't scare you, if they're not bigger than you, you're dreaming way too small. And that's just what it is. When I look at what I want to achieve, I ask myself, how am I going to get this done? But I understand that my job is not to understand how. I just need to take that step. I just need to do. The rest will work itself out. I just have to keep the goal in front of me. I just have to stay focused. You owe it to yourself to allow your dreams and your goals to reach their greatest potential. Continue putting in the effort. And sometimes you don't have to put in so much effort. Sometimes things just come together on its own. You're flowing. When I was a kid, I would always visit my grandparents' house and I would always stay in my grandmother's second room. It was called the blue room because everything in that room was blue. The walls, the furniture, the bedding, the sheets. The, the only thing that wasn't blue was the carpet. So my mom and I were actually having conversations about that blue room while I was deciding on a name for my production company. And I remember us talking about how we both felt about that room and it just clicked. Like, oh, that should be the name of my production company, Blue Room Productions. It just felt like the perfect fit. And really it was just my way of showing love to my grandmother for the type of woman that she was and what I witnessed her being when I was growing up. Around that time that I had registered my business, my grandmother was sick. She had two aneurysms and I remember getting the news that she had passed away and about a week later I got my paper in the mail stating that Blue Room Productions was now a registered business with the state. So I never got to tell her about my accomplishment. I never got to share with her the inspiration behind Blue Room Productions. You know, I know she would be very, very proud. I, that I know. So 2017 was the year I moved back to Chicago. After living in New York for six years, I was burnt out. I didn't want to leave New York. I didn't want to leave. I wanted to stay. I was so addicted to the hustle. I was addicted. You know, anytime I left New York for a vacation, I was thirsty to get back because I just wanted to stay grinding, to stay hustling, you know? And you can't always do that because you have to take care of yourself. I was burnt out because I didn't always go the extra mile to take care of Crystal. And I felt it in my body. When I came back to Chicago and I really had a moment to sit, I realized all that I had conquered, all that I had survived. And I thought to myself, wow, I went through that? So I know we hear a lot of conversations about burnout, but when you experience it for yourself, it is a very real feeling. And when I went through my burnout, I was not only emotionally burnt out, but physically burnt out as well. Taking that moment to just chill really gave me the opportunity to just self-reflect on the past six years of my life. I didn't realize how much I went through, how much I accomplished, how much I conquered. You know, going through the death of my father, going through a very toxic work environment, going through all of these different things emotionally, I really was able to rise above it all. And so I had to give myself a pat on the back, you know, because I conquered something. You know, I left Chicago to go to New York with no acting credits, nothing. And the thing is, 
I was in New York City by myself. All of my friends and my family and my supportive net was here in Chicago. So going through all the things that I went through, I went through it alone. I wouldn't trade any of those lessons. I wouldn't trade that journey because that journey was made for me to go on, to become the person that I needed to be. My dreams needed me to be a particular person. I still miss New York. I think about it all the time. And I think at some point I will move back because I feel like I have unfinished business. <laughs> but when I came back to Chicago, I brought that New York hustle spirit with me because I accomplished so much. And I'll talk about that in the next episode <laughs> or in the next few episodes. So thank you guys so much for tuning into today's episode. Do not forget to hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next week. That's a wrap. <laughs> okay.